What's up guys, Evil D here, and I'm back for some more World of Warcraft slash Esperanto lessons. So, let's start with a little bit of revision from what we've learned in our previous lessons, shall we? Now, first up, what is the word for cougar? The word for cougar is pumo. And what is the word for vulture? The word for vulture is vulturo. Looks like I'm going to go up this tower here to pick up a new quest. Do you remember what the word for tower was? It was Tudo. Tudo. Oh god, they're making me go all the way to the top as well. And how do you say this thing? Luktar, may your blades never dull. That is Tio Chi. So I've got to find a bunch of people by the looks lost in the floods. Uh, Spyglass to search for survivors. Oh, okay, so he gave me something to have a look around. Let's have a look quickly. Cool, now while it's doing that, what is the word for on? It is sud. Sud. And what is the word for above? Super. Super. And what is the word for next to? Apud. Apud. And do you remember the word for and? It is Kai. Kai. And what we're like randomly flying around the countryside, what is the word for lake? It is Lago. Lago. And what was the word for or? It is Ao. Ao. Now it looks like I'm going to spot two more of these areas before I can move on. So let's just do this one as well. And what is the word for white? It is Blanca. Blanca. And what was the word for blue? It is Blua. Blua. And it appears that we have one more of these random people I've got to find with my spyglass. So it requires the top. I'm on the top. What are you on about? Mi estas sur la turo. Mi estas sur la turo. What does that mean? It means I'm on the tower. So how do you say I'm on the tower? Mi esta sur la turo. Now I'm just going to quickly hand this in and then we'll be able to begin by learning some new words. <laughs> okay, oh I forgot to actually put my timer on so I'm probably a little bit behind. Let's begin. Okay, so I'm going to hand in this quest. Let's just come around here. I'm assuming it's around here. Or is it down a bit? Uh, it might be down. Where do I... What? What do I hand in this quest? Or is it down the bottom? It's down the bottom for sure. Let's do this. Come on. Oh, don't make me think it's back up there. Okay. Random cut. Okay, back. I swear to God I've got the freaking memory of a goldfish. Like, I just walk straight past that like two seconds ago. Do a quest and totally forget where i got to go hand it in. But anyway. Whatever. Anyway, yeah. Actually, I heard goldfish have got great memories. That was just um, a, like a fable that exists, basically. A fable? Not really. But anyway, I, I diverge. Let's go into the lesson. So you remember the word for um, in front of? It was antal, and behind was mal antal. Now, there's another way to say behind or after, okay? And that word is post. Post. Now, that word is pretty much... You can use post... Pretty much in every situation where you can use malantal, except for when you're talking about time, and I'll get into that in later lessons. But just for now, when we're talking about physical location, you can either say malantal or post. So how would you say the house is behind the lake? Now, use either one, it's up to you. La domo estas malantal la lago. Or you could say la domo estas post la lago. Uh oh, okay. Be like that, you crazy freaking raptor. Take some of that then, uh huh? Um, by the way, that was one where, random word I actually went and looked up a while back. I was like, how do you say raptor in Esperanto? And this is one of those things where Esperanto 
um, just hasn't quite evolved into that hemisphere yet. Like, I, I've pretty much found only one word for raptor by itself. Like, I found the technical Strength word for the that particular species, like the velociraptor or something. But the only mention I could find for raptor is, like, in a translation in Esperanto was uh, raptoro. Raptoro. So we're just going to use that for raptor every now and then. So this here is a raptoro. And now I haven't taught you the word for red, which we're going to learn in this lesson. So the word for red is ruja. Ruja. I don't know why I'm killing this guy. He gives me nothing. That is so pointless. God. These quests are actually... Is this How low level is this? Okay, well that's not too low level, so I'll take that out then. I was starting to think I was in like another starting area and just, you know, wasting my time here type of thing. So yeah, what is the word for raptor? It is raptoro. Raptoro. And what was the word for crocodile? It was crocodilo. Crocodilo. And while we're here under the water, I'm going to teach you the word for water. And the word for water is akvo. Akvo. And since we're under the water, I'll teach you that as well. So you remember what on is. It is sud. Under is sub. And just think of like submarine. That's how I pretty much remember it when I first learned it. Um, or submerge or anything like that. So sub means under. So how would you say I'm under the water? Or well, actually, I'm above the water at the moment. So let's say, how would you say I'm above the water? Mi estas super la acvo. And how would you say I'm below the water? which I'm about to be. Mi estas sub la acvo. Now, in actual technical fact, you're not really below the water, you're below the surface, but whatever. We're not going to be technical about this, now are we, guys? Anyway, so, what was the way to say behind? It was malantal. And what was the other way to say behind that I taught you? That could also mean after. That is post. So how would you say, for instance, um, uh, the mob, this mob here, so the mob is in front of the thorn. La estulo estas antal la dorno. La estulo estas antal la dorno. Ooh. Ooh, one of my friends came on long. I feel so special right now. Um, so I've killed that crocodile. Uh, we'll go for this one now. And do you remember what the word for red is? It is ruja. Ruja. Now I've ta taught you the numbers already. So I've taught you 1 to 9. Okay. But I haven't taught you the word for 10. Now I wanted to say that just for this particular lesson because the counting system in Esperanto isn't like English or French or any of the European languages. It's actually very similar. Well, not similar. It's almost identical, apart from the words that we use, in its design to say Japanese or Chinese. So the word for ten is deck. Okay? So that's pretty easy to remember. So it's just deck. Like, think of like a, I don't know, a deck of cards. Even though that's not ten, that's just how I associate it when I remembered it. Um, even it, that's one thing with like, uh, I forget what it's called, memoratics or whatever it's, whatever the technical word is for it. Um, as long as you can associate it with something, even though, even if it's not exactly like what you're trying to associate it with, it still helps. It just helps remember words. So yeah, deck is 10. Now, just, how do you think we would say 11? Now, if you know Japanese or Chinese, you can probably get this straight off the bat. So the way to say 11 is deck unu. Deck unu. And basically what you're saying is 10, 1. That's 11. So naturally you can extend that. You could say deck du for 12. Oh boy, thank you. Uh, let us be off then. Take me to my grandson. No, I don't want to take you to no grandson. Okay, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll follow you, grandma. Oh, we should learn that because we don't get to use these words very often. It's actually grand matron, but whatever. We're just going to pretend this means grandmother. So the word for grandfather is avo. Avo, okay? So uh, let's just protect myself now. Do you remember how we said um, the female suffix? It was ino. Ino. So to say grandmother, you would say avino. Avino. Now, ran a little bit of revision. How do you say 15? Dekvin. Now this is where it gets a little bit harder. How would you say 25? 
do deck win. So basically you say two, ten, five. So it's like two tens and then a five. Let's just get rid of this raptor that's in the way. Oh, protect myself! Okay, loot this. Now, we're going to learn in this lesson the word for also or as well. And the word for that is uncal. Uncal. So to say um, this is also a mob, you'd say uncal chitio estas estajo. Now you see I've used estajo there because that is not a humanoid in any form, so we can't use estulo. So you'd use estajo with that. But you've also probably noticed that I said Ankal Tio Chi. With the word Ankal, or its English translation, which is also as well, you always put it in front of the word that you're saying also as well about. Okay. So in English, we sometimes swap it around. Like, for instance, sometimes I'll say, um, I'm also very tired. You know how I put also after I? And then sometimes we'll say, um, let me think of another sentence. I can't think of another one right now. But sometimes we'll have it before or we'll half have it after. In Esperanto, it's always before. So how would you say, also, a snake is a mob? Oh, where'd she go? Oh my god. Oh, there she is. Ankal serpento estas estajo. We can continue now, I think. Let's press on. Hello? Hello, why are you flying? How do you say she is flying? Now, I taught you she in one of the first lessons. She flugas. She flugas. If you got that, great memory. And how would you say she's flying above me? She flugas super me. Oh, this is awesome. This is working out great for us today. And how would you say I'm walking under her? Mi iras sub she. Mi iras sub she. So she's about to land. So how would we say he is also an orc? Yes. Ankal li estas orko. Ankal li estas orko. Now let me just check what I've got to do over here. So we're going to go over to here and I'm going to go kill a few people, as every good Esperantist does. So, we've practiced Ankal. Let's just practice a little bit of the numbers again. So, how would you say 31? Tri dek unu. And how would you say 55? Kvin dek kvin. And how would you say 99? Nal dek nal. Um, I'm just going to take out this guy over here as well. Now, I've taught you the word for big, which was granda, granda. And I've also taught you the suffix for um, opposite, which was mal, when I, when I spoke about um, malmortatulo, which was uh, undead, okay? But we're going to practice mal a little bit in this lesson as well. So, if big is granda, how do you think you'd say small? Malgranda. Malgranda. Now I'm going to teach you the word for beautiful, okay? And the word for beautiful is bella. Bella. So how do you think you'd say ugly? Malbella. Malbella. Pretty easy. Why am I killing this guy? He's giving me no experience. I've got to seriously get out of this zone. I think I'm in like a dead zone here. I'm killing these people because I have to, but like, I'm not going to get any experience on killing them. This sucks. Whatever, whatever. We'll escape this zone in the next, after we've done this. We'll just complete this quest. Okay, now I wanted to speak about, um, I'm going to start speaking about a few things that you don't see in the game every now and then, just because I want to teach you those words. Like for instance, the word for pen is plumo. Now there is other words for pen in Esperanto, but you know, we don't really need to know those um, words at this stage. So for, for now, the word for pen is plumo. And plumo actually has a secondary meaning in Esperanto. So plumo can also mean feather. Oh, I've still got this um, walk on water thing. 
Ooh, how would you say I'm walking on water? Me idas sud akvo. Now, in real life, you'd probably say I'm walking on the surface of the water, but we haven't learned surface yet, so stop being pedantic. Anyway, let's just kill a snake, because that's what people do. Okay, so, how do you say beautiful? It is bella. And how do you say ugly? That is malbella. And how would you say also... Um, uh, let's think. Uh, also, that is ugly. Ancal tio estas malbella. Ancal tio estas malbella. Awesome. And what was the word for money? It is mono. Mono. And what was the word for pen again? It was plumo. Now, I think I actually totally distracted myself then. Did I tell you the secondary meaning of pen? If I didn't, or if I did, it doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you anyway. So the secondary meaning for pen is feather, okay? So as in, um, you know, like a bird feather. You remember like back in the old days where the people, they used to actually use feathers or quills to write? So I'm guessing that's how the, the secondary meaning of plumo came around. And the way I remember that and I tell other people is just think of like plumage on a bird. So that's how I just remembered it. So plumo. And do you remember the word for raptor? It is raptoro. Raptoro. I don't know why I'm even bothering to loot him. He's freaking too low level for me. I'm better than he is in every single way. Okay, let's just head back over this way. You know what? I'm going to cut this until I've handed in the next quest. Okay, and I'm back. So I'm just going to quickly yeah. grab this, whatever this is. Um, apparently he wants me to go in here and kill animals. I don't know if I want to do this because I think it's a bit low level all this for me. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to dump this stuff and we're just going to start heading north. And we're going to figure, we're going to get out of here. We're going to find a new region to go to. But while we're walking along the way, we're going to practice some new words. So, well not practice new words, but practice the words we've already learned. Okay, so how would you say, um, the mountains are red? Let's see if you can do this one, shall we? The mountains are red. La montoy estas rujai. If you made the adjective plural, you're awesome. You're all over this. You're freaking the best Esperantist in the entire world. Clap yourself on the back. And how would you say the house is blue? Now, I know houses aren't usually blue, but that looks pretty blue to me. Probably because it's in water. La domo estas blua. And how would you say um, also the water is blue? Ankal la akvo estas blua. And how would you say the water in the crocodile is blue? La akvo kai la crocodilo estas bluai. Remember, you gotta use plural there because you're describing two things with the same adjective. Okay, and how do you say, um, uh, the tree is behind the house? La arbo estas malantau la domo, or la arbo estas post la domo. It's up to you, whichever one you decide to use. Now, let's just quickly hand in this quest, because I, I did it, I might as well hand it in. Give me that random four armor thing. Like, I don't know what that is, but I'm, I'm using it. Oh, score! My previous one was four, uh, three armor, and now I've gone up to four armor. I am going up in the world like there is no tomorrow. Okay, so we're just going to head back to the city. Now, do you remember what the word for city is? It is urubo. Now, how do you say the boar is walking on the ground? Do you remember that? La apro idas sud la terra. La apro idas sud la terra. And how do you say... Um, also the raptor, or the raptor is also red. Ankal la raptoro estas ruja. Um, let's have a look around. How would you say the sky is blue? La cielo estas blua. Now, we've pretty much reached the end of this lesson. I'll be cutting it here shortly. Uh, next time we play this, we're going to be in a totally different area. I'm actually going to walk somewhere else and then we'll start up our lessons there. So, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, share with your friends. 
thanks so much for all the sharing you guys have been doing. It's been freaking awesome. I've got lots of new people coming in. So keep that up. Keep up the good work. And I will see you in the next lesson. And if you're not there, well, guess what they'll find in the belly of the nearest raptor. <laughs>